This is the day the Lord has made. And in spite of and because of, we must rejoice. Remember those that are with bowed heads and broken hearts, loss of loved ones, some of various sickness of different kinds, some in hospitals, some on their beds and friction at home, families in distraught, and just all kinds of things going on. And we want to lift them up in prayer. Yeah, yeah. Our Father and our God, first of all, I want to thank you for last night's sleep. You let us lay down in our right minds and woke us up in our right minds. And we want to tell you, thank you, Lord. You've been good to us all week long. Up and down the busy highways and other things things going on in our lives, but you kept us in peace, and we thank you right now. We want to pray for those that are on their beds of affliction in many hospitals across the land and country, many families torn apart, all kinds of things going on, but you know, Lord, you know exactly what to do, when to do, and how to do it. Lift up, bow down heads this morning. Find up broken hearts. Give ease to troubled minds. Families that are in distraught, bring peace and joy. Enable them to come together. We praise your name for laying down last night and went to sleep and don't know when we woke up this morning, but we woke up with joy in our heart, prayers on our lips, and thankfulness for what you did for us last night. Somebody had trouble and distraughtness, but you are able to bring peace from confusion. You are able to comfort broken hearts. You are able to bind up. You are able to direct us in the way that we should be going. Bless today, Lord. Bless every door that's open in your name. Bless every family, every child, every mother, every father. In the name of Jesus, give us strength that we might continue the tabernacle of this King's Highway. Bless the churches that are open. Thank you, Lord, for opening up our government, bringing us back peace. And we're just glad and thank you for all of what you have done for us and what you're doing right now. Thank you for every door that's opened up in your name. Yeah. Look on the hospitals this morning. Many on their beds of affliction. Whatever the situation and the condition is, we know you are able to speak and they will get well. You are able to raise them up and they will find joy. Many heads of ours, many families are in distraught. But send your word. Your word. The Bible says you sent your word. And heal them and deliver them from all of their destruction. Whatever the case might be today, send your word. Congregations across this country, send your word. Joy in the church, send your word. Peace in the home, send your word. Comfort on our job, send your word. Bless your holy name. Look on our elders today, Lord. Keep us lifted up. Keep us guided. Look on our families all over this land and country. Keep us together. Keep us focused in your word. And the joy of the Lord will be our strength. Bless every church that's open in your name this morning. Every well wisher. Somebody had a bad night last night. Some had a bad restful night. But we just lift them up to you now. And then somebody might be standing in the sanctuary with a burden heart, a trouble on their mind. Lift up their head. Strengthen them in the spirit. Guide them in the direction you would have us to go. In the name of Jesus. Bless this service. Bless this woman of God. I'm going to bring your words. Lift her up and push her on out there. Let us say what thus said the Lord. Bless every heart sitting in the sanctuary. Yeah. Those that could not make it, they are praying for us. 
and we are praying for them. We bless and praise your name now. When it's all over, we want to hear your servant say, well done, our good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over many things. Come on up on high. I'll make you ruler over many. It is in the name of Jesus I pray. Ask for strength and guidance in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And at this point in our service, we would like to acknowledge our visitors. We have any visitors, would you please stand and remain standing? Amen. Amen. Thank God for Monroe. Amen. 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 It is so good to see a lot of you I have not seen, except for maybe on um, um, what's that Zoom. If, if you show your face, I don't always show my face. But thank you, Jesus, that you are able to, to come in. Amen. 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 I do have a few announcements. Amen. Um, announcement clerks and intake clerks. I am asking if you all could attend the meeting here at the church on June 30th at 6.30 p.m. If you don't want to come, I can set up a Zoom conference for you. But you have to let me know before that day. Amen. Mm -hmm. And then that's for our announcement folks and our intake folks. So we want to get things going again. Amen. Yes. Yes. Amen. In the month of July, Monroe will be celebrating the 37th year church anniversary. Amen. 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 And those details will be forthcoming. Amen. On June 26, the village of Bellwood will be having their annual breast cancer walk. Donations are needed and welcome. Please make all checks payable to Monroe Baptist Church and in the middle part of your check, indicate that it is for the breast cancer walk. Yeah. If you would like to give cash, uh, please put it in an envelope state what it's for, and you can put it in the basket. We'll just set out a separate basket for it today. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Amen. And a new trunk party for Aaliyah Brothers. The party yeah. has been canceled. Yeah. However, just because the party is canceled, the young lady is still going away to college. Yeah. So she is asking if you could please give gift cards, so she can purchase what she needs when she arrives at the university in Mississippi. I don't know the name of it. I don't know if it's Mississippi State or what, but uh, please. And try to do it before. Mississippi State, Jackson, Mississippi. Amen. Amen. Mississippi State, Jackson, Mississippi. Okay, and please try to get them to her before the 19th because as I understand it and was told she will be out of town. Amen. Amen. So we can still support her. You know, we don't always have to have a party to support someone. Amen. Yeah. And the King David Williams Educational Awards. The forms are in the vestibule. Amen. Amen. And they're requesting no preschool, kindergarten through high school only, who are graduating have perfect attendance or who are receiving special honors, and any college students may apply. Please register with the Education Committee for participation in the academic and awards program. Due to the pandemic, the award will be mailed to you. The registration form, as well as any supporting documents of accomplishment, should be submitted to the King Day Williams Education Committee as soon as possible. Amen. And so you can put them in their mailbox that's here in the corridor by the Sunday school office. Amen. 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 And our thought of the week, leave your heavy burdens with God. And that comes from Pastor Wyatt. And our scripture of the week, and his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. 
And it comes from 1 Peter 1 and 3. Please study verses 3 to 9. Enter to worship, depart to serve. Amen. And now we will, we will, uh, uh, help me, Lord. Worship in the spirit of singing. Amen. Our choir will come. Yeah. Amen. I want to encourage the congregation. Let's pull ourselves back together and encourage one another. Get our church back on track. We're on track, but it's start coming together in large numbers and praising the Lord and keep everything going smoothly and lifting one another up. And whatever we can do to make our church lively, make our community more lively and encourage one another. Uh, Deacon Jones, I want to encourage you. I've been where you are, and, and I know how it feels. I know what you're going through, but uh, we want we want to keep ourselves going. I haven't been feeling so great myself. I've been kind of puny along the way, but I'm getting there. All right, all right. I'm getting there, and so we just want to keep ourselves lifted up, keep praying for one another, and not just for Monroe, but for our neighbors and for our all the people in our community. Pray for one another. Everybody's a human being. And everybody ain't on the same level. And you never know what they're going through. So we can pray at large for one another. Amen. Amen. May God bless you. May God keep you. Amen. Come on, let's give our pastor a hand. Amen. I know we've been through a lot. But I know you know that we'll make it all right. No matter what we're going through, I think God will make it all right. Do you believe in this morning? Yeah. We'll make it all right. 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 Thank you. 
First Corinthians, chapter 9. I will begin reading at verse 24. And I want to uh, thank, thank Pastor Wyatt. Um, it's a blessing to be able um, to share God's word. Um, there are many ministries that don't get the privilege that we do here to uh, cultivate the gift of uh, preaching and ministering to God's people. So it is a blessing, and I do not take it lightly. Amen. And it reads Know ye not that they which run in a race run all? But one received the prize, so run that ye may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertain, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring it into subject, subjection, least that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. God's word is blessed. Father, we again thank you for this day. We thank you for this time and sharing your word. God, I just pray that you just pour out of me, Father God, all that you have given me for your people on today. God, I pray that you would open all of our hearts to receive your word yes. and that it falls on the ground and that it bring forth the harvest 100 fold. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And you may see it in the presence of the Lord. Yes. And my title for this morning is Win Your Race. Win Your Race. This first Corinthians book in the Bible is called an epistle. It is a letter that was written by the Apostle Paul. And Paul wrote to the church during this time because he had received a couple of letters explaining some things that were going on in the church. So Paul needed to address those issues. And so he wrote this letter. Actually, he wrote it from um, Ephesus. He was in Ephesus at this time on his third missionary journey. He established this church here in Corinth during his second missionary journey. And that's mentioned in the book of Acts. So you will not find when he established the Corinthian church in Corinthians. It's in the book of Acts in chapter 18. And so the letters that he received told him about the different things that were going on, and I did list them um, to share with you all. <clears throat> and the Corinthian church is, is similar to having the population of the United States of America, a very diverse uh, immorality happenings and diverse people and all of that. It was also, um, had a lot of trade that went forth because of where it was situated. And so some of the things that were happening uh, that Paul was notified of in his, these letters were church division, disrupted church service, wicked deeds. The, the Christians were, members of the church were taking each other to court, but not just any court, they were taking each other uh, to the secular courts instead of working things out among themselves as they were supposed to do. They had questions, uh, marital questions that came up, came up. There was an issue with meat offered to idols named Eden. They were selling the, this particular beast that had been sold and uh, that were, was now being sold in the marketplace. But everyone knew that the meat had been offered to idols. So the question arose about to Paul about should the Christians be eating this meat? This meat is, you know, it's been offered to idols. This meat is not good for us. And so Paul had to deal with that because the issue with that was not that eating the meat was so wrong or bad, but because of their upbringing, they were not eating anything offered to idols. 
even though, yeah, now it's been switched and now it's in the market for sale, there were some who still felt like you should not eat this meat. And so Paul explained, you know, all things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. And if we're going to do anything that will cause another person, another Christian to, to stumble in their walk, we shouldn't do it. So he addressed it in that form of if the meat is going to cause your brother to stumble, don't eat the meat. They also dealt with the head covering for women. That should the women have their head covered when they pray or, or speak in the church? That was an issue. They discussed the spiritual gifts and the use of the gifts and how to use the gifts, the resurrection of the dead, and the offering for the Christians in Jerusalem. So there were a lot of problems and questions that Paul needed to address. And so he decided he would send the information via a letter. And so when we're talking about what we're dealing with um, addressing today, it's about winning your race. Paul talks about um, how an athlete, when they're in, a, in, in the Olympics. So here in Corinth, they had a smaller Olympics. It was called the It's Men Games. And it was very, very popular during this time. So for him to, to describe how they ought to run, run their Christian race using athlete in, the, uh, in these games was familiar to them. That's something they can resonate with. And so think of it as uh, a little lower level than the Olympics. You know, the Olympic is much huger um, sport. And so he uses the athlete to explain he says, know ye not that they which run in a race run also. You have all of these people who are participating, that they are all running, but only one, he says, is going to win the prize. He says, and you want to run this race to win. He says, and every man that, that strives for the master, he says, if you want to strive and you want to be the number one, um, athlete, you want to be the, the master, you want to win, you have to be temperate in all things. Yes. And he said, and you're doing all of this for a corruptible crown, for the little grassy carp garland crown they would see that will eventually die away. Yes. yes. He says, well, spiritually, what we're striving for, our crown is incorruptible, mm. that will last for all eternity. <laughs> And so he says, run, not as uncertain. He says, I want you to be sure. He says, so fight. He says, I fight. He says, and, and my fight, I'm not, I'm not swinging at the air. Okay? Uh, I'm not swinging I'm at up. the air. He says, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. Yeah. Paul says he beat his body. And they said that word subjection I mean, under my body, he's under his body into subjection. It means that literally Paul is saying, I punch myself in the eye. Mm -hmm. So Paul is saying, I give myself a black eye. He said, I tame this body. Mm -hmm. He said, unless by any means, when I have preached to others, that I should become a pastor. He said, if I don't keep this body under, the subjection of God's word and God's Holy Spirit, yes. and I just live any kind of way, but I preach something different, I will become as nothing. I will not be affected. Amen. 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 And so we want to win our race, but in order to win our race, we have to prepare for the race. Yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah. during these times, these athletes, it says they have to train for 10 months to even be considered to enter the race in Corinth. That's a long, that's almost a whole year of training. Yes. And just think you could train 10 months and still may not get into the race. That's right. <laughs> and I thought about a marathon runner. Um, and I aspire to do at least a 3K while I'm still here. <laughs> And I looked up some of the preparation that you have to do. You have to have the right running shoes. And you have to know your limits. 
You have to be able to go the distance. So to be able to go the distance, you have to build up uh, the stamina and the mileage over time. And if it's raining and you're in this marathon, you have to still run. So you have to be able to run in all types of weather. And you have to stay motivated. It said you should run three to five times per week. And you should run at a relaxed pace. And you're to do this for months, at least up to four months, up to this time for you to run this marathon. Mm -hmm. And it says you should run at a pace that you're able to hold the conversation. So that lets you know how to pace yourself. And I thought about us in this Christian race that we're in. And to prepare for the Christian race, First of all, you have to be, as, as these athletes are, you have to be a willing participant. You have to be a willing participant. Will. And I believe all of us here are willing participants because we, we, we decided to make Jesus our choice. We accepted him as our Lord and Savior because he sacrificed his innocent life that we may have the gift of eternal life. So we have entered the race. So we've entered the race. But are you a willing participant? Am I a willing participant? The next thing is we have to pre-train for the race. We have to condition our minds, yeah. our spirit. We have to have a want to attitude. Yeah. You have to want this thing. Mm. God does not force himself upon us. Okay. He gives us free choice. Mm -hmm. Yes, he called you. You felt that, that nudge. You felt that like it's time for me to give my life to God. Nudge you. I did. And I made the conscious decision that God I'm ready. Now, I had made that decision many times before and would go to church and then not stop going to church. And then go, you know, it was an on and off relationship. But I knew God. Yes. But I wasn't a willing participant. So one day, I finally went all in with God. Amen. Mm. See, to participate in the marathon, or in the Olympics, you have to go all in. All in. You can't you can't say, oh, I'm gonna eat burgers and, and potato chips and <laughs> drink all this pop and keep training. That's counterproductive. So let's look at it as Christian believers. Now I know, I, I know drinking and smoking is not gonna send us ahead. Okay. But God speaks to all of us of what he approves of and what he does not. Let's just put that right there. So we don't have to keep questioning. Oh, Pastor, have some wine. Oh, look at Deacon Jones over there. Ooh. Run your own race. Okay. <laughs> and another thing I had me look up, I had to make sure. A running race track has separate lanes. Yeah. They're separated. There's white lines, right? You with me? So you can stay in your lane. Same for us. If you stay in your lane. And, and not just stay in your lane. You know I got to think of a higher lane. Not just stay in our lane. We have to work our brain. We have to work our brain. We have to run our, our, our brain with patience, with love, with forgiveness, with repentance. And one of the number one things, the last thing I wrote is with discipline. Paul said, I beat this body in subjection. This body is going to do what God wants it to do. Amen. 
Not what I want to do. Because I don't always make the best choices for this body. So that is what Paul is saying. We have to live in such a way that we discipline ourselves as Christian believers to not just run our race, but win our race. So that means when we get to glory, we should have some other people that we have helped while we were running our race. So imagine if we're all in our lane. And let's just imagine we're all going at the same pace. Okay. Yeah. So that means we someone's here, someone's here, and we're all just working our lane. Mm -hmm. Working our lane. Yes. And then I decide to do something that God is not pleased with. That means I I just came over in your sister Tina Lane. She just saw me cutting up. <laughs> Now to made her some. Oh, so now she say, oh, if, if Mona can cut up, I can cut up too. Mm -hmm. And she a rapper? <laughs> all the weight on the rap. Why y'all put all the weight on the rap? <clears throat> I know we're held at a, a higher standard because we teach and preach our word. We, do. we are. Right. And not just the ministers and pastors that teach our word. Any teacher of the Bible. That's right. You are held at a higher standard. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So when people would ask me, oh, let's look and touch be a teacher. Oh, they so good. <laughs> I would say, no. They've only been here this long amount of time. I just can't let anyone teach over God's people. And I would have to stand on that. You can be a good teacher and all that, but I need to watch you for a while. Yeah. All right. That's just me. And sure enough, sometimes those people that were chosen, they won. They won. It wasn't time. I'm not saying that they're not a good teacher, but sometimes it's just not the time. Because that person probably is not really working their lane. All right, all right. They're doing things for God, but you need to be doing things in your lane to be productive, to move forward in what God has called for you to do. Teach, teach. See, when you're moving out of your lane, you're not going to be productive. You'll be doing things. You'll be getting some things accomplished. But we're talking about God taking you higher and higher and opening yeah. doors yeah. that no man can shut. Ready favor, Amen. give you opportunities. Mm -hmm. And God will do that without all the credentials Amen. that we may think that, that man feels we need. Amen. God can do it just like that. Yes. Okay. If we're ready. Mm -hmm. And as we say, stay ready so you won't have to get ready. Right, right, right. You need to stay ready so when the opportunity presents itself, boom, God can just like, whoop, open that door for you. But if you're getting ready and now there's an opportunity that God can give to you, God goes, darn it, she's not ready. I told her to be ready, not get ready. I've been telling them to be ready, not getting ready. So he's telling us today, when you're ready, Work your lane, your lane. Not sister girl lane, not brother man lane, your lane. If we're all working our own lane, we'll be accomplishing what God wants us to accomplish. And then when we come together, boom, synergy. Yes. When we come together, that we'll just be so powerful together yeah. because we're so powerful separately. Yeah. Working our way with God. And that's how God wants the church to move yeah. forward. He has blessed us to come back in the house. Let's work our, our, let's work our land. Some of us, we need a new land. 
Okay, let's get hop over to the next lane. A new lane that God is bringing you into. This is a perfect time to really get with God, talk with God, hear from God, and ask Him, God, what do you want for me to do? I'm ready to work my way. I'm a willing participant. I'm ready for training. Let's go. And then Paul talks about temperance in all things. That word temperance means a self-restrained, mild, self-control. This is a this is a, a big self-denying. We have to give up something. Yes. We have to deny this flesh. That's what Paul was saying. I, I deny this flesh to rule and reign over me to make me do things outside the will of God. To make me live in such a way that takes me out of my lane. That makes me behave in a way that takes me out of, out of alignment with the will of God. Someone is waiting on us to pass them the baton. Have you ever did a baton race? You know how it goes. So someone's a heavy. Like this. Wait. Waiting for you. To bring them that baton. Waiting in the lane. <laughs> <laughs> They're willing participants. They've been conditioning, they've been training. They on the battlefield for the Lord. <laughs> they waiting on you. <laughs> <laughs> but you got what they need. Yeah. I got what they need. But if I'm not running my race, they will never get that baton from me. Now, I know that God is not going to leave them standing there waiting on a non willing participant. He's just going to replace that person with someone else because that person's ready. They're ready. And not only are they ready, this shows us that we need each other. We cannot do this alone. We're in this together. And so let me just recap the five things I wrote, which I mentioned, that we need to win our Christian race. Number one, we have to have a posture of prayer. Staying in communion with God, talking to God, praying for our heart. Our youth, praying for our marriages, praying for our singles, praying for the church, praying for our pastors, praying for the violence, praying for the senseless killings, praying for the sicknesses and disease. A posture of prayer. Yeah. We talk to God. But not only do we talk to God, hearing from God. It's yes. a two way conversation. Getting quiet, getting still to hear from God. Number two, we have to have a posture of repentance. Repentance means changing directions. It's not just, oh Lord, forgive me, and then go back and keep doing it. It's, oh Lord, I mean, being godly sorrow for the wrong that we have done. We're so sorrowful, and it has affected our hearts and grieved us and grieved the Holy Spirit that we say, God, I'm sorry, and I want to change. And you work towards making those changes. And guess what? When it's a struggle area, and you know you, you've been doing this thing a while, and it's just, you know you probably won't change overnight. You feel like you just can't say, God, help me. Help me. 
Don't beat yourself up because you, you're still falling back into the same thing. Say, God help me. Yeah. If you mean it, he will help you. Yes, he will. If you mean it, he will bring you out. Yeah. Don't let the devil trick you up and beat you up and beat you down and send you in isolation. We don't serve that type of God. We serve a, a loving and forgiving God who can handle anything. Yeah. 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 He can handle anything. He forgives everything. We like to put things and sins in categories. Sin is sin. Yeah. Wrong is wrong. Yeah. 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 Right is right. Repentance. That will keep you in alignment. Keep you and bring you back into your lanes. Okay? Yeah. Number three, a posture of forgiveness. First of all, we know the Bible teaches if you don't forgive others their fault, God can't forgive you yours. Right. Mm -hmm. And I know I'm always in daily need of forgiveness. The good Reverend Mona, yeah, I'm sure it is. Forgiveness. Don't be so critical of people. Always remember what you do. What you've done. Stay in your lane. Forgiveness frees you. It frees you up. It connects you into a deeper relationship with God. Well, some of us has, have been mishandled, we've been used, we've been abused, we've been all of those things. But God says, forgive. Yeah. Yeah. Forgive. Number four, a posture of love. God is love. Yeah. God loves us unconditionally. That means he loves us in spite of anything that we do that is not pleasing to him. He loves us. If you're a murderer, he loves you. If you're a rapist, he loves you. God loves unconditionally. And this is one of our areas that we're striving to love like God. It's not easy to love the unlovable. To love someone you know they stabbed you in the back. You know without doubt. But you have to forgive and love them anyway. And I always look at it as, okay, God, you just show me what I'm dealing with. Okay. I, I get it. So now I know how to handle that person. I don't know how to handle them now. I have to give them. The love will come, you know, it'll come back. And sometimes, you know, it takes a while for love to come back. Yeah. It takes a while for the heal. Yeah. Don't think everything is overnight. It's not. But it's the process and we're striving. We're running our race. So we want to love like God loves. And when we love like God loves and we have that forgiving spirit, you know, it's easy for us to be witnesses for God. Because people feel your love. They, right. they know when you're really love. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And the last one is discipline. A posture of discipline. We have to be able to tame these bodies. We have a sinful nature and it wants to do what it wants to do. And most times it don't want to do what we stop. Let's just be real. And you can get triggered and boy, <laughs> you have been cussed in 20 years. Oh, come back and really push that button. You need to get them first words. They can explode. Woo! Okay, it's still in there. But you can tame it. That's right. You have to work on discipline yourself. Just like they have to condition and train to win the race. To be number one, we have to work and discipline, condition these bodies. 
to align with the Holy Spirit that lives in us, to align with the Word of God. That's going to bring about the change. You can't do any of this outside of God's Word and God's Spirit and being a willing participant. You cannot. That's where the power comes in there. That gives you the ability to do what you can't do within yourself. Because if we could do it within ourselves, God wouldn't have sent Jesus Christ to die for our sins, to give us his Holy Spirit. He enables us, he empowers us. The Holy Spirit teaches you, it guides us, it speaks to us. We have giftings and talents. So many wonderful things God has instilled in the belief. And so that is all I wanted to share on this morning. Win your race. God bless. Amen. Well, like I said, we're going to preach no more than preach this morning. And she gave us some very valuable information and guidance along our way. And sometimes we need to, we need that. We need to stop and check ourselves. See how we're doing. See what we're saying. See how we're saying. Be careful what you say that you don't want to hurt somebody or cause someone to stumble worse than what they have already stumbled. And as well, we have to keep in mind not, no person sitting in here know what the other person went through this week. Sometimes things in life that throw you off we think we're strong, we think we got this, we got that. Life will just kind of pull you off to the side. Something will happen. And that's the importance of praying for one another. So we should. She fed us this morning. She gave us valuable information, direction, push us along the way, and clear our path. Think about what she said. How some of those things apply in your life, how some apply in my life. We all have room to improve. You improve it will determine how you live. And if you share life to others, you have to come along the way. I want you to stand to your feet now. And maybe someone that is been encouraged, been lifted up. I hope and trust and pray that something she said hit that spot in your life. To help lift you up and focus you to keep on following, following the right path. As they are saying, I'd like for us to pray for you if you'd like to join the church if you haven't joined. If you need a particular prayer in a particular area, we'll take time to do that. You may come.